Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Grumpy, Grumpy old man. man. Sorry, oh. sorry. I can't do this anymore. Why not? Because, look, look at the shirt. I look like Tim Newton. <laughs> and thank you, Five Star Marine, for not sponsoring this video. Okay, let's change this. Okay. So, welcome. Nice to see you again. Thank you, Dean. So, nice to be here well, first again. First of all, I need to clear something up. Tim, we love you really. Okay, okay. so you just come back from Vietnam. Wow. Yeah. Now, nah. <laughs> there's oh. a funny story about that, isn't there? Well, it was, it was a bit of a challenge to get there. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw one of your titles where it says uh, Eric. Living in Hua Hin, Thailand, stranded in Bangkok. Yeah, so I spent a week in Bangkok before I got to Vietnam. Um, Which you weren't planning on doing? I was not planning to spend 10 minutes in Bangkok. Um, I went to, straight from Hua Hin to the airport, Dam Wang Airport, and I was planning on going um, straight to Hanoi. And um, I got turned down at the airport. I, I, they wouldn't let me on my flight. So I learned something. Um, I learned that you don't take for granted that the visa that you get to go travel to another country is correct. I didn't check to see if everything was correct on my visa. I should have compared all the, the na dates and everything with my passport. So Eric, let, let me go back a little bit. So how many attempts did you have at doing your visa for Vietnam? Originally or all together? Yeah. No, originally. I made about three, four attempts. Okay, because there was a lot of issues, I think, with yeah. pictures and things yeah, like that. Yeah, th they kept telling me something was wrong, so they wouldn't um, process it. The first time it was my um, passport picture mm -hmm. wasn't clear enough, and so I had to redo that one. And um, I did something you're not supposed to do. I used um, I used an app called Snapseed and sharpened the picture. And then uploaded that. I made it. I made it a smaller JPEG, and sharpened it. And then uploaded it. They accepted it. So I thought, okay, good. Now I'm going to get my visa. Then I get another letter saying that the information page of my visa was not clear enough. Mm -hmm. So I had to do the same thing. I went on to Snapseed and uh, adjusted the picture, sharpened it, and made the, the JPEG size smaller. Okay. They wouldn't accept a certain no, size. No. Apparently whatever JPEG I was trying to send them was too large. Okay. So they wouldn't accept that. So they finally accepted that. And um, and every single time I did the visa, did an up uh, like an update, they kept changing all the dates. They changed my birth date, they changed the date that I wanted to uh, enter Vietnam and the date I entered, uh, left Vietnam. Because I was looking for a 30-day visa. Okay. Uh, E-visa. And so they kept changing it. So I had to, before I press submit, I had to keep checking to make sure everything was correct. So I'm positive I did everything right. Of course but you did. Of course I did. But eventually, um, I got denied at the airport because the, the date on my visa was two days off from the date of my birthday on my passport. Okay. Why that makes a difference, I don't know. And the airline people spent an hour and a half the Air Asia airline people, who were super sweet and super nice, they spent an hour and a half trying to get immigration to let me through because I had lots of time, and immigration just said no. Okay, so I, I probably would scrutinise it as well because I've seen your passport photo, and your fo passport photo don't look anything like. No, it doesn't look anything like me. But yeah. I, I did. I had to do a, an updated passport photo. Oh, you did. Yeah, okay. one, w the one I used for my last visa renewal, old visa renewal, it was quite recent, it was only a okay. few months old. So, okay. uh, yeah, and my new passport photos don't look anything like my actual passport. I look really old in my yes, passport. you look like 20 years older. Yeah, because I was very unhealthy before I came to Thailand. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm 10 years younger since I've come to Thailand. Oh, 20 years. 20 years, okay. Must be 20. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. It's all those cookies you're eating. No, it's not the cookies. <laughs> it's all the walking I do. <laughs> um, 
so I couldn't go couldn't go to Vietnam and I and I pretended I wasn't Farang and I just went my pen rye I got I was very calm I did not get upset and so what the Air Asia did is they gave me a coupon that I could come back within a week to, to uh, get a new plane ticket so I went back down to Bangkok into town got a hotel room and uh, started applying for a visa right away. I mean, that's very good because anyone would be so annoyed because you think, oh, finally. Because you waited, I think, uh, some time for the original visa to come through. It took two weeks to get the original visa. That's unbelievable. I, normally, I think it only takes a few days. So that's a really long time. So then, get in a visa and you think, great, right, okay, I'm off to Bangkok now. You, you think that you're okay, you're ready to go. Ready to go. You're about to, gonna pour it onto your plane and then say, uh -uh. Nah, No, they just denied me. And of course that's never happened to me before. So that was quite good. But now that I'm a Thai resident, I was, I'm very calm. Mm -hmm. um, so I went back to my hotel room, started the whole visa process. And it's very frustrating because the visa doesn't tell you where they are in the process. So you go online and it just keeps saying the word processing. Yeah. And every day I checked it like about six times a day. Oh, just in case. Just in 2,000 years later. In case so, I could, just, so I could run. Um, and then on the seventh day, seventh morning, and they still hadn't processed it, but that was the day my ticket was valid for. So I got on a motorcycle and um, I grabbed and went back to the airport and told them my dilemma and I was very nice to them very kind spoke as much Thai as I could and then they gave me another five days leeway that's very nice of them really because I don't think they, they had to they do they didn't that. have to do any of that no they didn't have to do anything I could have been just stuck uh, so they were very nice but I really think it's because if, you, if you're nice to them then they're nice back so um, what's your saying that you normally say to people when you're going to immigration or when you're going to oh. other officials? Well, all, all, always, I always go Sawadi Kap, Koto Kap, um, Putai Mai Dai Kap. And thank you for helping me in English. So I'm saying hello. Um, sorry I don't speak Thai. Thank you for helping me in English. And I find when I go to the bank or immigration or anyone, the service level is higher. Yeah. It's yeah. just because I'm being polite. Yeah, I think. you're being respectful. Yeah. I've, that's great. I've that's noticed great. it's always good. So, and I think that helps, and that's why they they offered to give me a ticket for mm -hmm. even five days later than the seven days. Yeah. Um, and after I got the five day renewal for the ticket, I went back to my hotel room, and within minutes the visa went through. <laughs> so I had to get another grab and go back to the airport and renew the ticket. And I went next day. Where in Vietnam did you go? Well, the first place I went to from Dom Wang Airport is to Hanoi. Okay. Uh, and I stayed in the old quarter. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be very nice, isn't it's it? It's beautiful. And it's, it's, you see right away, you see the old uh, Vietnamese, Vietnamese culture. Mm -hmm. And of course, right away, I saw like 100 coffee shops. Oh, that made you happy. I love that because you know I love coffee. Yes. Um, and uh, so I spent a few days, three days, I think, in Hanoi, mm -hmm. and uh, walked around Hanoi, mostly in the old quarter. It has a, a beautiful market, and I also did a, one of those hop-on, hop-off bus things. Okay, that's quite cheap as well, isn't it? I don't remember what I paid. It was that night next to nothing. I like going on these hop-on, hop-off things. Even though it's touristy, hmm. you get to see a lot in one day. So it, if, you're, if you're only going to be for a few days, it's a really good way to see things. And it's just one ticket. And then you get off, and it goes look at stuff, and then you wait for another bus to come by, and then you get on, go again. Is it busy, though? So many people there. I would imagine it's going to be very busy. Well, it wasn't that bad. Oh, okay. You know, um, it wasn't, the bus wasn't full. The town was busy, and the motorcycle riders were absolutely crazy. Oh, maybe most of them are on the bikes. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many on the bikes. <laughs> And it was so loud, but I really did like Hanoi. From Hanoi, I went up to Sapa. 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 S A P A. Sapa. Okay. That's up in the mountain. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bus ride was great. I took a sleeper bus, and it just went winding through the roads. And okay. Good thing that I I didn't eat that morning. 
And, um, <laughs> um, but it was just so beautiful. Like, and it's in the mountains, and it's, it's called the City of Fog. Okay. So, like, it was when you're so it's like a bit like Chiang Mai, then. <laughs> a bit like Chiang Mai, yeah. <laughs> except a little prettier. Um, there's a, in the center of town, there's a big globe, and it has this sign around the globe saying City of Fog. Okay. So we're not talking about city of pollution, we're talking about city, no. of fog. city of fog. Well, because it's in the mountains. Okay, um, so there's all the clouds. There's the clouds and there's a lot of rain. It rained a lot while I was there. I actually bought an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you with an umbrella. No, it, but it was a lot of rain. Oh, it wasn't okay. a little bit. And um, I found that um, I couldn't get dry because I was just wearing sandals. And so I'm walking down the street and mm. all the rain is just coming down over my feet. Mm. So I really highly recommend anybody going to Sapa to get waterproof shoes. Waterproof shoes and not sandals. Not There's sandals. a story about your sandals, isn't there? Well, I don't know about if it's a story, but everybody kept trying to polish them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all, all through Vietnam, everybody kept trying to sell me something. They were trying to sell me polishing my sandals. They were trying to sell me those fans. They were trying to sell me umbrellas. Um, they were trying to sell me those conical hats. Okay, yeah. Just, I had to learn how to say, um, well, come on means thank you. Okay. And con come on means no thank you. Okay. So I was saying no thank you. Quite a lot of times. A lot. And I had to say it, in, I said it in Vietnamese about a dozen times, and then I would have to say it in English, and I would have to raise my voice just a little bit. No, thank you. Because they, everybody wants to sell me anything. I didn't buy a thing other than that umbrella in mm. Vietnam, like, except for food, because I like the food and the coffee. But, uh, but Sapa was absolutely beautiful. I didn't go up into the mountains. There's a, a what do you call it, a, a tram? Yeah. But I was talking to somebody who had been the tram in the morning. Yes. And they said it was so foggy they couldn't see anything. Um, and it's a beautiful town. When you walk through the town itself, you almost have this feeling that you're walking through uh, a European city. It was really, really nice. Um, people were nice, of course, all of Vietnam was nice. But uh, so I really did like Sapa. It was very beautiful. but. I got too wet, so after a few days I left. But um, but in Sapa it was 17 degrees, which is cold for us. Well, just nice for me, I think. Nice. Well, it's actually quite nice, but it, it was just a little bit too wet for me. So where okay. did you go after that? Well, from from Sapa I went to um, Hoi An, and that was a 13-hour bus ride. 13 hour? Yeah. Are you crazy? That was crazy. There, I could have gone to some other places first, mm -hmm. or whatever, but I decided I wanted to go to the end of my ride, which was, which was Hoi An, and then come backwards to go towards the Mang. Um, As you do? Well, <laughs> other people thought I was crazy, but that's just the way I wanted to do it, so I did it. So I took a, but I took a really nice sleeper bus. Mm -hmm. Like sleeper buses are really cheap in Vietnam. Well, the 13 hour one, I took a nice, what they call a limousine sleeper bus. Oh. So it was wider. And what I really liked is it had Wi-Fi and I could charge my phone. Yeah, yeah, okay, so nice. If, when you're gonna be 13 hours on a bus. Oh, you need, yeah. Then you, you need, need to that. charge yeah. your phone. And uh, so that was just, and I dozed and stuff, and I brought some food with me and ate. And Watching Netflix or something like that is probably nice as well. Well, I just watch YouTube, I don't watch Netflix. <laughs> um, but, uh, so that was a nice ride to Hoi An. And I spent a couple more days in Hawaiian. I don't even remember what I did at this point. Um, what about the beach? Presumably you spent time at the beach? I never really spent a whole lot of time until I went to Da Nang. Okay. Because you love your beach. I love my beach, and I miss my beach. Takia Beach. Mm -hmm. I miss my beach. Um, but there's too many people in Vietnam. Um, and so from, uh, from uh, Hoi An, I went to Hue. Where? Hue. Hue. H-U-E. Okay. Hue. Hue. They called it Hue. Okay. I, I always pronounce it wrong. Was that a long Hue? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that long. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and that was a nice town as well. But the the best time I had was going from Hue to Da Nang. Okay, because because I hired a motorcycle rider on a big Honda, and he took me six hours. Six hours later, all the way up to Da Nang, and I drove through all these rural areas. I got to see water buffalo and rice paddies and little tiny villages, and driving really fast up the mountains uh, with trucks almost hitting us. And so there's, on, on one of my videos, I've got like 10 or 15 minutes of me being on the back of the bike. And a journey I will take. Hallelujah. But it was a six hour ride, so we, well, we made stops. We mm -hmm. stopped at the Citadel and a couple of um, uh, temples and things like that. And I, we stopped at one place in the middle of nowhere. But what, what I really liked about it was that I didn't sit at a table. They had hammocks for everybody. Oh. So I got to lie in a hammock and oh. drink my drink. Okay, and well we, that's a bit risky, isn't it? You're drinking a drink in a hammock? Well, you might. Surprisingly, I was able to handle that hammock just fine. Like I had no problem falling, getting in or out. Really? And everybody, like I'm sitting there, and there's everybody all around me. are all just lying in the hammock. Oh wow! And we're in the middle of nowhere. It's mm -hmm. kind of nice. That six-hour ride on the back of a motorcycle was really exciting, um, and it was such a nice way of seeing real rural Vietnam. Wow. Um. <laughs> Uh, and I know my friends think I'm crazy. <laughs> I thought it was just an, it was just an adventure. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to spend one hour on a bike. Not on on the back of a bike. If I'm riding a bike, that might be a different thing. Well, I like riding my bike here in Hoa Hien, but the traffic is so different here than in Vietnam. Uh, absolutely crazy in Vietnam. Uh, people, I don't know if there's any rules. They certainly don't follow any of them. Mm -hmm. And everybody honks at everybody all day long. It's honk, 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 honk. Oh, you're going through all these intersections up and down the roads. Everybody's honking. Yeah. And so many of the intersections, I mean, some of them had roundabouts. But some of them, the money didn't. I don't know how they managed. They had like five or six roads going into an intersection, and people just went. Magically no, appeared. No traffic lights. No traffic lights, no nothing. I don't know how they magically managed to go where they were supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And I took a lot of taxi rides, grab rides, you know, like that's how I get it brought around in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, and I just prayed and accepted that what was going to happen was going to happen. And I just mm -hmm. figured I was going to get to where I want to go. <laughs> it was, but there is no way in earth I would ever ride my own bike. Some of these roundabouts in uh, Hoa Hin, when you've got four lanes coming into one, is, is hard enough. Well, I, I thought it was bad until I got to Vietnam. Now, the, now these roundabouts and ra traffic in Hua Hin is going to mm -hmm. seem so nice and easy for me. Mm -hmm. it, like, it, this is much more relaxing here. Like, for me, I don't really like a whole lot of touristy <laughs> things. I do some oh, touristy okay. things. I just like to experience wherever I'm at, Hua Hin, Thailand, Vietnam, just as is. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, natural. Uh, I, I really like just seeing how people are living. In Vietnam, like, everybody's using every, every little bit of space for housing. So like, you're going up a, a, a small little alleyway and, and they're just, they're, all of a sudden there's another little house there and oh. then another little house there. They're using whatever space they can get for housing. Wow. Yeah, so, and I, I like to explore. I have no idea when I'm walking around. I just. I go out of my hotel and then I, I make a decision, left or right, <laughs> and then I just go. So the last place that you went to was Da Nang? Da Nang. So Da Nang is a place that I really want to go to. Everybody I know wants to go to Da Nang. By the time I got to Da Nang, I was already a bit tired. Um, the beach was beautiful, mm. the, the, the water was beautiful, the sand was beautiful. Um, what I noticed right away was that there wasn't any shade. No oh. trees with shade. Okay. And I like shade trees, and mm -hmm. that's, I'm used to this, the trees in, in Takia Beach. Um, so, I mean, I went there. I went and had a drink somewhere near the beach. But so, so, talking about drinks, you, you found a drink that you like. 
if you, if you call it a drink. Well, I really liked all the coffee that I had okay. in Vietnam, and I was really anxious to try all the different coffees. Mm -hmm. So um, the first coffee I had, I went to a place um, in Hoi An that was 50 years old. Oh, okay. And um, did, they, did they have a proper coffee machine like what's going on at the no, moment? No, they had <laughs> some kind of a, a filter system. Okay. In a clay pot. Okay. Know, did they, they do all this kind they of? They were doing thing? all kinds of yeah, okay. things like that, and it was really, really good coffee. Okay, um, good. For me, like here in Hoi and, and in Vietnam, I need a good black coffee to start my day. Okay. So I start out with a good black coffee. And then later in the day, I'll have more coffee. <laughs> and then I like flavors. Um, so my second coffee I tried was the egg coffee. Okay. And so how is it? I don't know what it, an egg coffee is. What, I, what I is really it? like <laughs> the egg coffee, but it takes a long time to make. Oh, really? It, it took like 15 minutes because they take the egg mm. and they have a beater, electric beater. Oh, and, and they got beat the crap out of that egg forever. They just kept beating it and beating it. Um, and then you get this little cup, and it's got about two inches of egg foam in it. You're waiting all that time for the egg foam? Is that what you're waiting for? That's what you're waiting for, okay. for egg foam. And, but it was really, really tasty. I don't know what they do with it. Okay. But it was really, really tasty. I had, I don't know, I had egg coffee about five times while I was in Vietnam. Okay. And, um, so you, you spoon all the egg, it's like having a latte, you spoon all the cream off, mm. but it's more than a latte. And oh, okay. And Maybe I might enjoy that. Then. And then, but you only get a little bit of coffee at the bottom. Oh, okay. So like, Maybe I won't enjoy it. Then. So, I mean, I really like the egg, but not enough coffee, and it was a good thing I already had a real coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and then a friend suggested I try the salted coffee. Oh. Salted coffee. It's a salted coffee, and I was a little bit disappointed because I had it first thing in the morning and it was cold. It's iced coffee. Oh. And no, I need a hot not, coffee not in, in the morning. morning. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's salt in it, uh, but it was still good. Okay. It was still good. But my favorite coffee. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for this one. My favorite coffee in Vietnam. Uh, unbelievable. Um, and I had a lot of this. Was what they call coconut coffee. I don't really call it coconut coffee. I call it coconut ice cream with a little bit of coffee. <laughs> yeah. So you get the big tall jar, the big tall glass. Yeah. And it's just chock full of coconut ice cream. So it comes with a, a spoon and a straw. And you have to eat all the ice cream to get to the coffee. And it's so basically what you it is. You said it comes with a straw. Yeah, it comes with so a straw. So you could bypass the the well, ice cream if you wanted to. Well, what I was doing is I was eating the ice cream. About halfway down, yeah, and then mixing it. Oh, okay, with the coffee, and then and then then using the straw to drink the rest. Okay. So because it's it's the ice cream, and, and they do uh, like one cup of espresso in it. And but the coffee in Vietnam is good. It's really tasty, and if you, if you like real coffee, then it's really good. But but is it tasty, or is it all the stuff that they're adding to it? Because you. You've got the coffee and the egg, you've got the coffee and the coconut ice cream. But it starts with a base of good black coffee. Okay. And so that's why it's good. Because it's the, they're using a good Vietnamese coffee. Um, so I had a lot of coconut coffee. That's, I can't believe that black glass. It was a big glass and a ton of ice cream in it. Wow. And I, I love coconut ice cream, period. Mm. Um, I can't eat regular ice cream. So um, whenever I see here in Wahin, I see a guy walking by with those carts, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I yeah. have to stop all of them, even on my bike. Oh, I and stop. ask if you got the coconut. Yeah. Oh, OK. I, I can't pass the coconut ice cream up without buying it. I don't care what time of day it is. So what are you going to do here now? Well, I'm actually planning on going to the, the supermarket and seeing if they have coconut ice cream in the, in the freezer section. Oh. And I'm going to start making my own coconut ice cream at home. It won't, yeah. It won't be the same. It won't be the same, will it? Because but I, but you I, but I think so I, much ice cream. I think I'll enjoy it. I do have um, a French press at home. 
I have real coffee at home. Like mm -hmm. I mostly drink instant coffee at home. Oh, okay. I only drink real coffee when I go out, like mm -hmm. to the Rose Garden. Um, but at home I drink instant coffee because I'm basically lazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's quick, why not? It's quick, you know. I, 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 you know, you turn on the kettle in the morning, go get dressed, and come back, and then make yourself a coffee if it's easy. But I'm gonna, I want to make my own um, coconut ice cream, and I might even want to try making the egg coffee, but only if I'm doing it for a friend. Yeah, but you don't know. They probably put they probably put stuff in it. Vanilla essence or something. They in probably. It. It's got to be sweet because otherwise you won't yeah. enjoy it. I could always Google it. Yeah, you you got to have a flavouring, so it's probably vanilla essence or something like that that they're, they're adding to it. Otherwise, you won't want to drink it. But it's raw egg. Raw egg, yeah. Oh. No. I'll eat anything. <laughs> I saw, I, we went by on the bike, we went by a coffee shop called Weasel Coffee. Oh, the weasel coffee. And I Drinking coffee from beans that have been sh out by a weasel. Coming out of an animal's butt. Weasel coffee is among the most expensive in the world. I wanted to stop there, um, but he, he was going too fast. And I thought I would tell him on the way back that I wanted to stop there, but then I forgot. But they have something called weasel coffee in Vietnam where they have caged weasels, I guess. I'm not sure what they do. Um, and they feed the uh, the weasels coffee beans, and the um, the weasels pass the beans. Then they process the beans after they've been processed. Mm. I'm assuming they wash it. <laughs> um, well, that might not. Uh, well, it might not. Who knows how the flavor is done? And mm. then they make coffee out of it, and that's a special coffee that you can buy. And and, and you missed that. I might, I meant to have some. I think some of your friends were encouraging you to and oh, sending you links yeah they were they were all encouraging me to do it because they know that i i uh, i'm a bit adventuresome mm -hmm. so yeah talking about coffee coffee do you want to try some decaf coffee we can try decaf because i need to finish my other video oh, okay that's right we started one yeah we started one and now i need an ending okay. so not happy ending but an ending so I don't know what a happy ending is in Thailand. <laughs> so we decided at the Rose Garden now to have two kinds of decaf coffee. Okay. After your so before we wasn't really that interested in it at all until so I made a video about yes. a coffee shop. Yes. And I made an offhand comment about I don't know why people have decaf coffee. Mm -hmm. And I found out that that's quite an important issue with people. And uh, so now, whenever I go do coffee, I ask about decaf, even though that's not what I normally drink. But I know other people find that important. Yeah. Because it's not so easy. And I've done some research and with bulk coffee, different kinds of coffee, and it's been really difficult and really expensive. I've been very surprised how expensive it is. It's, it's double or more than double than normal coffee because it has to do the, the extra process. But to try and get the right coffee is not that, that easy because I tried some coffee in it, the decaf coffee and it's horrible. And it has improved, I didn't enjoy it. But now we've got the, the standard here and then the premium. Okay. And they're both really nice and I can and I do substitute it. So if it's getting late in the evening, you and I know, the, yeah, you yeah, I know. I know that if I'm gonna have a a coffee, I'm gonna be up all night. So now I switch to uh, de decaf, mm -hmm. and I'm enjoying it. And I never thought I would enjoy decaf coffee. Well, the Rose Garden is the only one of two places I know so far in Hawaii that has decaf. I only know the two places. So, um, but I know a lot of my viewers are interested as well mm. for decaf. So, what coffee would you prefer? You prefer Americano, isn't it? Yeah, Americano. I don't put anything in my coffee. Okay. So, we we'll give you... Unless two it's coconut ice cream. But <laughs> yeah, we'll have to work for, for on... We'll have to work on that one. Yeah. There's a lot of ice cream That's to go in. Cream. Yeah. We might have to give you a smaller version. Yeah. But it would still be nice, though. It would still be nice. 
Um, so, so we'll give you the decaf normal and the decaf premium and see what that tastes like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, so thank you. Let's go and order that then. All right. Normally, I get uh, recommendations on YouTube, yeah, and know. your video normally always pops up all the time. Um, but I noticed that you're not on there at all at the moment. Now, presumably, it's probably because I left Wahin. Yeah. So most of my viewing is to do with Wahin. Right. So it points me in that direction. But because and all, because all my videos are saying I'm in Vietnam. Yeah. And when I upload my videos in Vietnam. I'm doing the location in Vietnam. Yes. So it didn't occur to me I could tell him I was also in Wahin, but um, I don't know. What? You can? I don't know. No. You only got one choice. I think I only got the one yeah. choice, yeah. Um, so that's probably why you weren't getting the recommendations. Mm -hmm. My viewership went way down while I was in Vietnam because people are expecting my videos to be Wahin. Yeah. Right? Because that's. My, my videos are Eric living in Wahin, Thailand. Yep. So that's what people are expecting. And I'm back now. He's back? I'm back. I, think I came back a couple of days ago. And uh, I said to people that I was going to rest for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, because but you haven't really. Had. Well, not really. I've been going out and having coffee with everybody. <laughs> um, and you went to the coffee group today as well? I went to the coffee group today. And yesterday I met um, a nice couple from Texas, California, that are subscribers, mm -hmm. and they invited me out for coffee yesterday, and they also bought me cake. Oh, <laughs> nice! Yeah, we ha I had a super wonderful visit with them for three hours. Wow, three hours! Dennis and Carol. It, yeah. it doesn't do things by half. No. Well, I I love meeting people, and and, and I love going for coffee, so it just works out. That's the, I think the fourth time now I've met a subscriber. Hmm. Um, so I really enjoy that. So. I'm going to start doing my Wahin videos again. Good, good, um, good. I really, really enjoy it. I really enjoy sharing my life. Because mm -hmm. um, basically that's all I'm doing. I'm just sharing Eric on my videos. And um, one of the things I'll be doing is going for coffee again. So I want to I want to discover some new coffee shops around town. There's so many coffee shops around Wahin. So I've got so many videos I can make on coffee shops. I still like doing temples. I love temples. I yeah, feel it's just I not not very it's not popular. very popular, and I don't care. I'm I'm doing it for me and the few people that want to see it. Like I don't really care if people watch them or not. I enjoy it. I I find myself um, really relaxing and spiritual when I go to a temple. Mm. Um, and out of breath. And out of breath <laughs> because they all have so many steps. Well, you're going towards heaven, aren't you? Yeah, I oh, think Buddha. I, I'm going towards Buddha. Yeah. Um, I'm finding that the longer I'm here in Thailand, the more Buddha I feel. <laughs> um, I, like I've really learned. But do you know, Buddha seems to be resting all the time. Yeah, he does. So I either time. like well, sit I, in there or he's laying down. When I was in Vietnam, I really saw a lot of the laughing Buddha. And that's who, oh. I, that's who I aspired to be, is the laughing Buddha. Okay. But like, I don't consider myself Buddhist yet. But um, I like Buddhism and the aspect of kindness. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I've been trying to apply to myself is I'm trying to let things go. Here's your butterfly. That's my butterfly. I, oh, yeah, I, I see it. Nice big one. Am I even coming over here? He's coming to like talk it. to me. Um, so that's because you were talking about butterflies earlier butterfly on. I was but wanted to do a video on butterflies. Yeah, because there's a, bu bu a, a park near Wahin that has a butterfly season. But um, I find that um, by following Buddhism, mm -hmm. I'm learning to let go of all the crap in my past life. I'm just letting it all go. Like, I'm no longer dwelling on stuff that's happened. I almost said something else. I'm just letting it go. And I'm just trying to live in the moment. But I don't consider myself a Buddhist, but I do consider Buddhism something that I want to aspire to. Um, and when I go to a temple, I, I just feel that spirituality. Um, and I often meet a monk there. 
in the morning and they're always so nice and kind. One, one monk asked me if I was a Buddhist. I told him I was a Facebook Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> because I follow Buddhism on Facebook. <laughs> and so I'm getting, I'm learning a little bit. I need, to, I need to get things in small, small sections. So I'm going to be doing some um, videos of that. I'm doing a video tomorrow. I think it's going to be my first video since I come back. And that's going to be of a local temple. And I'm hoping to get up early enough to get the sunrise. But although the sunrise hasn't been great because it's been very cloudy. But the beaches have been fantastic, which I've been missing out on. Is that correct? Well, the sun hasn't been showing up on the beaches, but the oh. beaches have been, um, the tides have been out in the morning. So yeah. like, it's been really beautiful to walk on. Because when we were going originally to the beaches, I was meeting you or kept on bumping into you. Um, it, it was so narrow. It and was then so narrow and you could only see, you could only walk a small part. Yeah, or you could get past that bit. And then when you turn back again, yeah. You can't but, get past it no more. But so, so I'm at the beach at 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Most of my friends in, in Hai Hin think I'm crazy. Um, but it's, it's a beautiful time of the day. And the tide is way out. You can walk. I, I usually walk um, oh, about 4 to 6 kilometers out and then 4 or 6 kilometers back. You know, because the tide is out. So you can, yeah, you, you can. can. You can walk and, and then that's an enjoyable... I used to love the beach walks when the tide was out yeah but it got too challenging when the tide tide was in yeah, in the middle of winter the yeah. tide is, is too uh it comes in too much and we got some coffee coming okay okay got and you got you got your latte i got my latte because i can't have black coffee i hate black coffee well i like latte but you can't like have the it taste of it but if i have too many lactose products then my stomach just rebels. I like to have a cheesecake. Yep. So if I can have one piece of cheesecake in a week, my stomach's okay. But if I, I have two, mm -hmm. my stomach goes no. Or if you're having clotted cream. Or clotted cream, that really killed me. Because we had clotted cream here. Yeah. And that same week I had already had cheesecake and a latte, and then I had the clotted cream. Yeah. And then my stomach went, uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah, but we had that on your scones. Yes. And that was really so tasty. Scones and jam, you enjoyed it at I the time. I enjoyed it at the time <laughs> very much, but my stomach rebelled by the time yeah. I got home. Yeah. Sorry about that. Well, we know now. Such is life. Thank you. Mm, you're welcome. Mm. I like that your coffee's always hot. I hate it when I go to places and it's not hot. Yeah, I've gone to a lot of places and it's lukewarm and it, it, I, I need coffee to be hot. Oh, here's another coffee. Cup can cup. So I don't know which one this is, so I'm really enjoying this. Well, this is good. I, I find it really strange that I enjoy decaf coffee because I never thought oh. I would. Me too, because I remember back in the UK where decaf coffee and it's the weakest stuff it wasn't enjoyable at all it's like all the flavor had gone out of it yeah and it's just a weak coffee it wasn't very nice at all well, not, you know what i'm having trouble with this because they're so they're so they're both, both of them are nice this one's got more flavor though i think i don't know they're both good No, so I'm enjoying both of those. What about you? Well, they're both slightly different flavor, but they're both yes. tasty. Mm. So I don't know. And like, I'm just getting the actual flavor of the coffee. No, no, no mixture, no sugar, no milk. And it's very strange for me. I, you know, I have the sweet tooth. Mm. I love cookies, I love donuts, I love cake. But with your coffee, you don't ice cream, but no not sugar. with coffee, nothing. It has to be just, I want to taste the coffee. So I think, me personally, I like the first one best. What about first you? One, that's the first one for me. Man, it's good. Yeah, I think the first one, a little smoother. 
it's smoother and a little bit more flavor. Mm -hmm. But they're both good coffee. Mm. If those coffees ended up, I went to a coffee shop and I had those and I ordered a normal latte, I'd be happy with both of those. Yeah. But these are decaf, so it's, that's really surprising. So I'm, I'm gonna have to find out what's what because well I'm gonna remember that because if I have coffee here at, later in the day maybe I'll switch to decaf because people are starting to ask for more decaf yeah. now right because we well, not, we not here because I don't think people come here because they don't know that we're doing decaf coffee well I've mentioned it a few times and it's off the beaten track a little bit isn't it well it is in a way except that I know a lot of people uh, stay in this area automatically like they just automatically when they come into town stay in this area so this is not off the beaten track for the people that stay in this area yeah that's that's true yeah you've got a, quite a few hotels up there yeah it's gonna be 20 bar extra for the decaf, decaf coffee so the premium one is going to be 75 and then the the cheaper decaf is going to be 70. And that's yeah. still a really good price compared to a lot of other places I've been in town. Like, and I've had some pretty bad coffee in some places. Oh yeah, you can um, pay it like 110, I, 100. I, I paid 125 at one place, uh, and then oh. they and then they charge a VAT and VAT and whatever tax. I don't know. They charge two taxes, uh, and I don't like paying taxes. Yeah, I think it's service charge and tax when they do plus plus, which is not fair. No, so um, I won't go back to those places. So it's still a good price. I mean, we're still cheaper than some places anyway, in comparison to a normal coffee. Compared to normal coffee, yeah. So, okay, so that's a success. That's I would, a success. I would say something I'd really recommend. Yeah. And so, I will be recommending. So we do do lovely decaf coffee, coffee at, at the Rose, Rose Garden. Garden. So now you know. Now you know. It's one of my favorite restaurants. <laughs> I know you think it's funny, I keep saying that, but it really is one of my favorite restaurants. Thank you for that. I think we, we need to do something a bit fun. Not now. Not now. I think we should have a race. A race? Yeah. What do you think? A race of what? Like boats or like running or? No, not that kind of race. That's too much hard work. A go-kart. Oh, go-kart. Do they have that here? Yes. Oh, I'd love to do that. Well, it's up by the airport. Okay, I mean, I've told you, I want to start a group, mm. a Facebook group called Adventure and Stuff. Mm. And so what's, far, what's no, the stuff? Well, the first one I want to do is I want to do, I want to go ziplining. And I haven't found anybody to go ziplining with me yet, but I want to go ziplining. <laughs> <laughs> and then stuff. I want to do something like golf. Oh, no. Mini golf. Not no. golf, golf, mini golf, or um, kayaking. Or oh yeah. I want to do, what I want to do is, like, I belong to a lot of groups that we sit around and drink coffee, and yeah. cake, that, that um, have coffee, yeah, all that stuff. I want to do something active. Yeah. And Sounds then go like for coffee afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after we burnt off after all that. After we burned off. Yeah. Yeah. So that sounds so, good. So my, my plan is in the next, next few weeks, this is sort of new Facebook group, mm. to get people who want to do something here in town that's more active and, and I've got ideas but the more people that join the more ideas that can come out of it yeah so and I didn't know there was go-karts I'd love to go go-karting I used to do it back home mm. so should we do that so so let's say instead of doing this next next Monday yeah which airs on Sunday um, we'll go go-karting go -karting, and then give it give you a, a race Right, and then talk at the at the go kart. Yes, and then maybe go, for a, go for a coffee afterwards. afterwards. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm down for going for a coffee after anything, <laughs> <laughs> or before anything. I'm down, always down really, for going you, for you coffee. You know, really, we need the the adrenaline before but before we the. Need, we need it before. Yeah. yeah. But like, uh, like, I really enjoy my life here in Bahrain. Like, mm -hmm. I am living my dream. But this whole thing about being retired and not doing anything is difficult. No, you can't. I not need to anything. be active. I need to do stuff. So there are things to do. You know, I joined the um, Trash Heroes.
to clean up trash on the beach once in a while. Um, Which can be difficult and problematic, uh, possibly. Difficult problem, possibly, yeah. I'm having problems with it because you have to be so careful here in Thailand if you're doing any volunteer stuff. Um, even if technically it's not wrong, but if one person complains to the police, then the police have to do something about it. Because there is people that do clean the beaches. Yes. And if you've got so other I people come in along cleaning the beaches, then why do they then need somebody those might Thai some, Somebody people? might think that I'm taking a Thai job yeah. away. And, that, so and that's the thing, isn't it? It is. You can't take away a Thai job. No. But we can't take away any job anyway, can no. we? No. And I'm, I'm on I'm on a, a O retirement visa, which means I can't do anything, yeah. including volunteer work, and I can't work. So technically, we can't probably feed animals. We can't wash animals. No, we I can't I, volunteer. At yeah, dog I want I wanted places. to volunteer at a dog rescue place, yeah. and there was no. Um, I actually met somebody whose friend got deported from Thailand for volunteering at a dog rescue place. Something that's needed, mm. but it goes against the, um, that's mine, that it there. goes against the uh, the rules. And um, I like living here in Thailand. I want to follow all the rules. Yeah, exactly. I want to stay. You don't want to get chucked out. I don't want to get chucked out. We're helping, and we're trying to make a, a positive difference. Right in Wahin, but sometimes it's difficult to do that because of the laws. Right, yeah. So I, I do what I can. I rent from a Thai person. I buy from as many Thai people as I can. Oh, you, but, um, you, you go along the street markets and uh, buy the local food? Yeah, I buy all the local food. I, I, I buy from the, the temple markets. I, I, you know, I don't buy, very rarely do I buy from the supermarket. Um, I need to make a video about it one day because people keep thinking that if you follow me that there's only Thai food on the street, but there's not. There's so many supermarkets and places where Western uh, Farang people shop. Yeah, some are quite I expensive as well. I think they're well. all expensive. Oh, okay. Um, relatively cheaper. Like I mean, we got Lotus, which used to be Tesco Lotus. So yeah. basically, it's like a Tesco back back home. Yeah. Um, so if you want everyday items, and there's a lot of items, and whether it's electrical, whether it's anything, basically, it, it's at a good price. Yeah. Um, but you found places that are much cheaper. Much cheaper. I, I, I find stores like they call them 20 baht stores, um, where I buy from um, little markets in the, in the fresh market downtown. Mm. Um, I've met so many uh, foreigners here that have never been to a, an actual market. So the other day I went down to a market and I, I was a little bit shocked. Oh. Uh, my wife wanted to do some shopping for, for here. So I thought, oh, I got a bit bored in the car. Um, so I went and had a look around the market and there were snakes. There oh was, yeah, you can find anything here. Snakes, oh my God. frogs, there, eels. Yes, there, um, there was loads of eels, but there was actually snakes. snakes. And that, they're all live. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was so shocked. That way. I thought, huh? Like, I was really, really shocked. I mean, they had other nice things like chicken. Yeah, um, chicken, pork, yeah. Um, beef. Very they beef. had everything, but, but yeah, it was, they had a, everything it was the snakes that got me. The snakes that got you? I didn't think I was going to see any snakes. Well, I have no problem looking at snakes. Um, it's not really my first choice for eating. And you were telling me earlier on that you have had some insects. Oh, yeah. Well, I've eaten the insects quite a few times, mostly when I was in Chiang Mai. Um, just because it's sort of like the thing to do. Um, and I've had scorpion and crocodile. Um, I'll eat anything. I'll eat anything probably. Like I would eat that snake if somebody cooked it for me. I must admit, I never had snake. I've never I think snake. I might have had a frog when I was in France. Yeah. When I was younger. But uh, I bet you the no. snake tastes like chicken. <laughs> why does everything taste like chicken? I don't know why. Weird. Any white meat tastes almost the same. But I love chicken. I eat a lot of chicken here. Well, the, some of the chicken here is absolutely fantastic. 
but unfortunately a certain brand here is not as nice as it is back home and I won't mention the brand oh, okay the like the batter around the chicken is oh. is not like the original We're sorry the oh, well, I've heard it's better, I've heard it's better here but um, no but I, but I haven't tried it I I have tried very little Western food here I had my first Western burger in Da Nang mm -hmm. I had a, a, a Whopper at Burger King and that's the first Western style burger I've had in two years. Um, I, I eat English breakfast once in a while, but I don't. I don't go out and eat in Western yeah. restaurants. Yeah. I haven't had pizza in two years. I keep meaning to, but I haven't had any. You've got to find a good place for pizza because um, so sometimes they put a horrible sauce on it. Yeah, it's like a well, a, a salad creamy sauce which the, doesn't really go well. The stuff at Tamarind Market looks good. The pizza there, and I keep thinking I would have them. But most I think times, everything at Tamarind Market. Oh, I love is the Tamarind Market. Quite nice. Yeah. It's quite nice. Um, I used to live across the street from the Tamarind Market, so I used to go quite often. But now I live farther out. But now, and now I cook more at home. But because um, now I have a home to cook in. You yeah. have. You have a big home. I have a big home, a one bedroom townhouse, and with a big kitchen. Mm. So. I'm doing more cooking, and my next step is I want to start baking. Um, I've got a friend here in town. She's going to lend me her uh, sourdough, sourdough starter. Oh. So I'm going to start oh. making my own bread. Okay. So that's a big... You, you're not doing it the easy way then, by the sounds of it? No, well... I mean, I used to cook and bake a lot back home. Because you can eat yeast, can't you? I can eat bread. Yeah. Yeah. Why not do it the easy way with yeast? You mean like buying it? The yeast and make bread yeah. rather than the sourdough because it's a bit more com oh, complicated the recipe. Sourdough is good for the stomach. Sourdough bread is good for the stomach. It's, um, it's healthier. Is it? Yeah. And because I have stomach issues, I have acid reflux. So there are certain things that I want to eat to make it better, make it easier for my stomach. Okay, so you know the sourdough, there's a reason why they call it sour, it's, 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 going, in, it's going in the range of acidy. Yes. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. But for some reason when it's baked out, it, it's, it's good for me. I don't know. I like it. Okay, that's the most important thing if you, yeah. if you like it. I really like the banh mi in, Thai, in Vietnam. Whatever they did to that bread in Vietnam, the banh mi, Okay, I don't know. I don't either. know what they do to it. It's a French bun of some sort. It's probably a totally different way of totally doing it. And I ate it every day. <laughs> wow. In Vietnam. Yeah, it was really, really good. Okay, so okay. I, I think that's it for this week. So well, thank you, Dean. So it's always no, a pleasure no, to talk you. with you. Thank you. So I plan on doing this uh, every week. So, but next week we're going to have a race. Going to have a race? Now, I haven't been in a go-kart for, God, how many years? I don't know. It's been a long, but long time for me too, so. I, I mean, I've been in a bumper, bumper car. car. That's probably and you drive a car. It's not quite the same, not although you same. would think it might be in Thailand. Yeah, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I ride a bike, motorbike. Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll see what so that's. So we'll hopefully, hopefully it's not raining, because it is rainy season it's technically the rainy season although i haven't been caught in it yet okay. so so next week the following, following sunday, sunday um hopefully we're not wet and not skidding around all over the place and uh hopefully we're going around the right no, way <laughs> oh yeah i don't know if it go left or right here we'll find out yeah we'll have to find out so it's going to be a, a, a learning curve for both both of us yeah so uh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah? Um, I wonder who's going to win. I wonder if we can drag along anyone else. Oh, I'd like to try. I've got a few people I can think of. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay so, so thank you very much. Yes. And catch and you again and next thank week. Thank you for watching. Cheers. Cheers now. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Yeah, it didn't work. It didn't work? What didn't work? <laughs> I'm saying it didn't work because you look the same.